Alrighty, um, so this is going to be another video in my EE projects series. So this one is going to be about that 120 watt power supply that we've been working on. So this is kind of the first, uh, this is the first video right after the introduction where we start to get into, so we're kind of starting with um, the idea, right? So the first step when it comes to, to doing a project like this is you want to flesh out the idea as much as possible before you get started because then it helps you with your selection um, it helps you going forward a whole lot so the main details and this is actually a very simple project right so it's not like we require a huge long spreadsheet of all the the details related to i just have some of the relevant ones up here that we can talk about so um, the first thing with regards to a power supply that you probably want to have established is going to be the input voltage range so this is a very typical voltage range. Like if you watch that other power supply video I did, 85 to 265 volts AC, this is considered universal input. So this means it'll work everywhere in the world pretty much, right? Because I don't know if you guys know, but everywhere in the world, um, their they're, you know, they're wall outlets, they're not all the same, right? So in America, it's like 120, 115 volts AC. Um, in like Japan or somewhere it's like 100 volts AC but in Europe it's like 265 right so we want our power supply to work everywhere in the world it's a rather rather trivial task to do that um, so it doesn't really change up our design a whole lot to allow it to work throughout like literally the entire world right you might as well do that right because um, there's a whole lot of customers you can sell to whenever you can sell to all of Asia Japan, Europe, and America with the same power supply, right? You don't want to be limited in that regard. So 85 to 265 volts AC, like I said, that's going to be our input range. And get used to that because that's going to be pretty much everything you want to have this range. So the output voltage range, I arbitrarily set this value just because, well, for one, we can take a look at the amperage and then the wattage, right? So I just wanted to pick something that was just a little bit higher in power because 5 watts is a very, very small power supply. Um, and there's a number of reasons why you'd pick something that's a higher um, wattage for, for purposes of learning, right? Because whenever you start getting up in wattage, you have to start adding in some other smaller circuits within our bigger circuit in order to ensure proper operation. And then there's some other, um, like features that you'll typically have like a flyback controller for example if you saw the introduction video you know that this flyback converter has a feedback circuit um, on it which the 5 watt one did not so as you start getting up in these higher wattage ranges and usually flyback goes up you know a little bit over 200 watts i think um, you might go a little bit higher than that in some cases and we can talk about that at a different date but like I said, I picked 120 watts for the purposes of learning, right? Because it, it allowed me to pick a flyback converter that um, would, would the, the, design, the design process of it would teach us some more stuff about power supply design, right? So that's why I selected that one. Um, and again, the topology is flyback. So the reason I'm picking flyback is because a flyback topology is such, and I cannot stress this enough, it is such a valuable topology to be well um, acquainted with, right? It has remarkable safety characteristics because of its isolated design. It's very low cost, very simple, pretty much any power supply. It teaches us a lot about switch mode power supplies, which is a fundamental power supply um, category that pretty much all modern power supplies use some type of switch mode power supply. We're talking like buck converters, boost converters, set flyback converters, um, even stuff getting up in the higher range, like full H bridge, they use some type of like switch mode, some type of switching mode. So it's, this is this is a great one to get your feet wet with, right? If you can design a flyback, this, this puts you in a good position to pivot to more complicated topologies, like I said, like the full H bridge, or even simpler topologies like a buck converter. You just, you understand their operation um, pretty well if you if you know how to do a, if you know how to design a flyback pretty well um so another thing going into the input connector so i just selected this connector this again was was relatively arbitrary um i just picked this one because that way we can get used we can get familiar we can familiarize ourselves with some more iec rated connectors 
So I always want to take the opportunity to, um, we sort of need one, one important thing that electrical engineers should be uh, you know, familiar with is navigating manufacturer and supplier websites and understanding all of the tools they have at their disposal. So I don't want to just keep reusing the same old connector over and over and over whenever we can learn about different connectors and learn about their properties. Because um, connectors, a lot of times, where the, the electrical properties of the connector don't really matter so much, a lot of them matter when you're, say you're working um, with closely with a mechanical engineering team or a mechanical engineer, they might actually require you to pick a different connector because of say its orientation, the uh, just overall size of the connector. Um, there could be, you know, because of its uh, being, because of its, its through hole mount versus surface mount. But there are a number of reasons why just having a, a solid understanding or solid knowledge base of all the different connectors at your disposal could come in handy. Um, so, and that also leads us to the last part, which is the output connector I put TBD, right? And so the reason I put TBD is because this is actually good. I mean, honestly, this since we're still learning, I mean, this is all I, the reason I put this here is because I want you to understand that sometimes you are start a project without knowing some of the final details of it, right? So with that in mind, I, I want, we want to be a little bit nimble with, with our design approach. Um, so, and understand that we might need to pick, you know, there are a variety of connectors that we need to be able to support with our board, right? So this really doesn't come into play that much in this project, honestly, because like I said, our board is literally just a power supply. So being able to outfit it with uh, different output connectors is gonna be trivial, but late in a later date, you you might have to have projects where you, you have to swap connectors, you know, on the fly because, you know, product decides they want something different. So. Just understanding that part, I guess. I'm just being aware of that. Um, so next we'll just go into the block diagram. So if you remember the block diagram from the five watt power supply, it was extraordinarily simple. I mean, I even tried to make it a little bit more complicated just to try to get more detail in it last time. It was just literally like three blocks. So this one we added a little bit more stuff. So of course we have our AC input, which is given to us via the IC320 C14 connector. Then, we're going to go to stage one of our EMI input filter. So I don't really want to cover too much about what that is in this video. If you want, go search my channel for EMI input filter design, EMI basics. Um, there's a, I have several videos on EMI input filters and why we need them. So we're gonna go through stage one. So stage one is like our common mode filter, our Y caps and our X caps, right? Then that's gonna give feed into our input bridge rectifier what's going to convert from AC to DC. So we're going to use a full wave bridge rectifier. And then that is going to feed into our EMI filter um, part two or phase two, which is just going to be our filtering inductor in the low pass filter that is formed by either a, a another capacitor or our input capacitor. Um, so after we get to after we get through that, then we're going to go through the primary transformer primary side, and then of course we know that the power is going to be transferred over, transferred between the primary and secondary via the flyback controller and the MOSFET that is switching on and off. Right. Um, go and watch my video on flyback converter basics if you want to understand more about the mechanisms of action that are going on here. Um, but that's kind of what I'll leave it to here is we just have a switch, a switching mechanism going on to transfer power, right? And then finally, it's going to be converted to DC output. And then that's where our TBD connector is going to be positioned, right? In order to, you know, connect us to whatever power source we need. Like say we're powering a fan or we're powering some LEDs or something like that. Um, that's where that connector is going to come into place, right? Because we don't actually know what we're going to power with this this power supply yet. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, so yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up for the spec sheet and block diagram section of this video. Um, drop a comment if you have any questions about this part, or if you have any suggestions. You think if if you think there are any other relevant spec sheet details we should have added, or if there's any. Um, places in this block diagram you think could be better explained i'll be happy to answer any questions for you guys so 
um yeah i really appreciate it drop a like um subscribe for if you want to keep uh stay up to date with all the future videos i post for this project i'll be posting them very regularly so uh yeah thank you so much i really appreciate it